we're measuring the distance. Now, it's not any valid units, but I think, actually, thinking about it, I don't know if it's pixels. Uh, it might be pixels, I'm not sure. I can't really say that because I've never looked into this. But then what we're going to do is just keep pasting that, and we're going to turn the enemy... <laughs> I'm not going to say that, but we're going to spawn the enemy. I was going to say something else. <laughs> equals false. So he's no longer asleep. Dot is alive. Equals true. Because he's now alive. So we declare that so he can fall from his initial spawn position declared on the tile map. And uh, so we can bring him down and start the physics. So walkersi.walking equals true. Okay. Um, walkersi.touching uh, ground equals false. Now this doesn't really matter if you declare this or not because the game will check if he is touching ground or not because I might spawn him touching the ground already or not. So uh, is dying equals um, false because he's not dying of course. All we're doing is we're resetting all their um, their things here. Dot type of equals Goomba. Now um, I'm not sure we need to do this um, just thinking about it. Not sure we need to do this, but I guess if we later on add a turtle, then we'll we'll set something to define each of them separately. So walking direction equals left. Now left because if we check if you check this isn't left. It's not like the um, Visual Studio knows what left is. If you go on variables, you'll see that we declare that there. No point me going there, but if you want to check, go there and you should see left and right. The reason for that is. Um, because uh, we declare them by default left, I could put um, db random um, one and then find out it would guess put a random number whether going uh, left or right is the option. But the reason why we don't have that is because in most Mario games, they by default, if you think about it, they go to the left immediately in order to screw you over. So that's just the way they walk. So we'll leave them doing that. So this is our uh, awake enemies method done. And now we're going to do another one. And I think we're just over halfway through this uh, class. Void enemies. And now we're going to handle the piranhas. Um, piranha collision. Open that. And we're going to send in int array x int array y and int oops int type of collision. So we use this to figure out um actually I'm not sure. What do we use this to figure out? My events don't take damage. Yeah, I believe type of collision is not actually necessary on this. I don't know why I've I think I was just copying an earlier method. Yeah you don't need type of collision here guys. Um yeah so if map what we're checking is if they are colliding with Mario. If they are, we're gonna deal some damage to Mario because he's um uh because he touched the plant when he shouldn't have. And as usual this collision isn't perfect but it works fairly well and it's fairly um constant. So if this equals equals E P L make sure it's like that and it's defined so or just gonna copy that again. So we're saying if E equals the right or left plant, because they're two different tiles, of course, EPR. So if E equals if it touches any of the plants, um, we do um, we do a for loop, right? Because we go through every plant for int i equals zero. I if i is less than uh, max piranhas. Now I'm constantly checking because I'm so paranoid about those errors we had earlier. It's like just going to get annoyed if we have more because it will just waste our time. So we go through all the piranhas, then we say if piranha plan. And once again, you should copy this, right? I. So just copy that. Do that and copy it because we're going to need to use this a bit. Oh, crap. It's an S there. So make sure you copy it with an S. Is that right? Yeah, that's right. So copy that. Dot. Um, yeah, and this is what I had to dec declare this for. So we declare this variable reference j equals equals uh, array x. And the reason why I, <coughs> I did this was because uh, piranha plants were basically overwriting each other when um, when checking for collision. So you wanted to make sure it was checking the right piranha for the collision because you don't want to you don't want to check on one side of the map um, to see if that one's colliding with Mario when he's on the beginning of the map. 
So we're just checking the perfect one so that we can do damage from the exact one that is touching him. Now, that might sound, sound confusing at first, but that's just how I explain things, which isn't very well. So plant on him is less than 28. So what this means is, if, um, let's just think, <coughs> if reference Oops, oh my god, sorry, sorry, I totally screwed that up. See, this is one of those stupid mistakes I usually make. I was talking crap, that's why. So, just copy that again. We need to compare reference I as well as reference J, and that should be a Y at the end, right? Is that correct? Yeah, that's correct. So, we, that next bit we're going to have to do now. So, we check if um, it's the correct plant, and if it is, we copy that. Oh, crap, 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 crap. Just need to copy that, not the whole thing. Um, so I dot um, plant a name. So if the plant animation is greater than zero, and because oh crap, I'm having tons of luck here today. Jesus, oh my god, this is terrible. And perennial plant I dot plant a name is less than 28. So what we're checking I here is is the plant animation greater than zero? and less than 28. Now the reason for that is because um, if it's greater than zero it means the plant has come out a little bit right? If it's zero we don't cause collision because the plant is hidden. If it's greater than 28 the plant is nearly hidden so we declare that as a no collision. So at that point when he touches it if it's 28 the plant is almost gone so we just we just don't count that. And if if he does touch it we do my events dot take damage because it's going to take damage because he touched the plant whilst it was out pretty much and then we say um, and once this happens we simply say break because we wanted to break out the loop and stop searching through the other plants to make sure none of them was collided with him because if one did you do the damage and it's impossible to have two plants colliding with him at the same time um, for quite a few reasons which there's no point in explaining I'm sure you guys understand that. Um, our next one is called Piranha AI and now so we go void enemies and keep that um, Piranha AI keep that on your um, that thing pasted uh, copied on your um, buffer because we're going to need to use that again uh, so enemies Piranha AI uh, so close that, that doesn't receive um, and what this does, this is going to go through the piranha, it's going to uh, put the animations on, it's going to check distances and you'll see as we go through it so for an i i equals zero so if i is less than max piranhas, we just simply do what we did above there piranhas, then i plus plus probably should have done a build before the last one uh, before this one was started to make sure we were okay so far uh, so for an eye, um, I'm going to take my jacket off, it's getting a bit warm. <coughs> so for an eye, piranhas. So what we're going to do next is we're going to check if the piranha is alive. So we're going to say, if, uh, so keep that, like I said, piranha's eye dot is alive. We want to check if it's alive. And if it is, I'm just going to leave it like that. If it is alive, um, we're going to say, if Piranha plants dot type of equals equals EPL and once again we're checking is that plant is a left if that plant is a left plant um we're gonna go perennial plants and then we're just sim gonna have something similar for the right plant so I'm just checking this out so from what I'm reading from my code <laughs> other finding errors when I'm doing this so I'm pretty sure it doesn't matter what type of plant it is because the code is exactly the same yeah so it doesn't matter what plant it is yeah so it doesn't really matter this so delete this line please sorry about that so that a good thing about that is we're not gonna have to write as much code as I thought so perennial plants I dot uh, perennial plants I dot distance so let's hope that I was right about this so just like before you remember that uh, distance formula we did? So just copy that. So we'll miss dot get 2D distance. There's no point in us writing this over and over again. So now the problem with copying and pasting is making sure um, that we've got the right things in. So let's change these 
with Piranha Plant. So get that and overwrite that. So we're checking Mario X, Mario X, and make sure this is valid. Yep, that's right. So we're checking Mario X, Mario Y, Piranha Plant X, and Piranha Plant Y to make sure if they're close to the um, to Mario, we do something about it. So we say if Piranha Plants I dot distance in theory we didn't actually have to create a distance uh, variable within that structure but we did it so we're just going to go with it so if any plants i dot distance is less than 225 okay we do we say perennial plants uh plants i dot too close equals true so is within uh, 225 um, units of the plant which is actually quite close and like I said earlier I'm pretty sure this is pixels then we declare two clusters true if he's not um, within that distance so if he was and he moved back that's when we need the cells here so if he was too close and now he's not we need to declare two clusters being false and then if the plant is too close um, uh, yeah if Mario is too close then we declare that as um, true but if he's not um, sorry I'm just confusing myself so if he's too close we move um, we hide the plant after it's reached its um, bottom animation and if he's not too close we keep the plant with this animation going up and down and so on and this is all we need for this um, so this method um, on my example is actually fairly bit bigger uh, good thing that um, I've done this because now I know you guys don't need to write as much for this bit so that's done the Piranha AI is done um, and this is it this method is uh, this class is complete alright so hope you guys are okay with that and now for the slightly more bastard one which is the physics and enemy movement we'll do that in a second let's just check for any errors and six errors so let's check those out current walkers uh, is current walker where did I make that mistake Walkers, current, oh, it's current walker. Sorry about that. So that's one, and the same mistake I make every bloody time. These uh, forget to close the uh, thingy when I use one of their methods. Uh, you sprite Y, and that's same again. So today I've been doing um, because I've been learning some C++ and stuff. Uh, because the C++ we do here isn't actually very difficult. It's very basic. Um, I'm just gonna do that. Walking direction equals left. What's wrong with that? what is the problem here so let's build rebuild solution uh... let's just fix these errors and I'll keep telling you what I was talking uh... my enemies dot h was not matched correctly what do you mean I left parenthesis I've had this a few times I'm not I don't remember what this is about uh... walking direction dot walking direction equals oh. alright hang on so missing before that the f are you talking about? Is this it? This can't be right. Oh, uh, sorry. I think it's this. Uh, so, but the way it tells you about it is, it's like, oh, this is something similar. So take a guess. So as as I was saying, I was doing some C plus uh, plus tutorials and stuff. At least uh, the console applications and Windows API, which is I'm a lot more difficult than this because um, I'm trying to get into the uh, aimbots and stuff um, and they're, they're actually not too bad I mean I've done a lot of C sharp and stuff in C before but uh, they're not too bad I mean um, obviously in the future I'll be doing some tutorials but um, I expect to do things such as uh, like I said aimbots and stuff on the um, on the demo if you were there for it things such as aimbots and stuff and I hope I'm guessing those would be quite good to do because uh, not many people are into that kind of stuff. Uh, at least you don't see many tutorials of it. So uh, that's the kind of stuff I'm into, and that's the kind of stuff you guys should be seeing quite soon. <coughs> so um, what we're doing here now is we're going to do the enemy fire movement. So we're just going to—I'm um, just going to check quickly if we have to add anything to main after this. I don't think we do, do we? Um, Mapping that display animation. Yeah, so what we're gonna do is um we're gonna uncomment some stuff quickly. So you remember the class we said create enemy. So just look for it here and you should be able to find there we go. So this is it. Uh if you wrote here when I did as well, so then 
So if we do this, just put a dot here just to make sure it knows what it is. It apparently doesn't. And I'm guessing that's because